A lot of times people will ask me, what's the toughest case I ever had in my career? That's really too hard to answer with just one story. I have a million stories. Why not start telling some of them? One of my toughest cases in my career was when I was in the emergency department and we had a family of four coming in from a car accident. They were on their way to Cedar Point, got into a rollover, family of four, nice, beautiful family, mom, dad, two kids. So I'm trying to take care of all these kids. And one of the hardest parts of being in the emergency department in a community setting is that you're the only doctor. Like there's not, you know, this team or you don't have like five doctors there that are able to take care of you. So if you get four victims of a car accident, it's pretty much you. So at this time, you know, mom and dad were actually doing okay. They were a little banged up. We were sending them over for CAT scans. And the little guy who's eight years old, the nurses came and grabbed me and they said, hey, he, he's not looking so good. And so I go over to see this child. And at the time, my son was eight years old as well. And, you know, same shape, same size as this little guy. And he, you know, he's sitting there and he obviously had a head injury. I'm not sure. I think he wasn't uh, wearing his seatbelt. And when they flipped over, he was kind of bounced around in the car. Um, you know, so he had some significant head trauma. And at this point, he was just getting very pale. Uh, his heart rate was escalating. And, you know, at that moment, he started to seize. At this point, we had an IV in him, so we were able to give him some medication. Uh, but whenever you hit your head that hard and you start seizing, you know, and we really don't know what's going on yet because we don't have the CAT scans, we don't have anything back yet. He'd only been there for a few minutes. You know, at that point, we made the decision to intubate this patient. So we gave him, you know, a medicine at a van in order to stop the seizure, and it did work. Um, but at this point, obviously, he was pretty unresponsive. Um, and we didn't really know what was going on, so we made the decision to intubate, which is where you put the tube down the throat, kind of stabilize things at that time. Well, as I'm getting ready to intubate this child, who again, looks just like my child, same shape, same size, and same age, uh, you know, I'm getting ready to put the, the tube down his throat. So we have to use this blade in order to get into the throat so that we can put the tube down there. It's not really a blade, um, but that's what we call it. And, you know, as I'm about to do this, I just see this tear running down the side of his face. Oh my gosh, it almost broke me. And, you know, we were able to intubate him, stabilize things. We were able to get him over to CAT scan where the CT, thank God, was negative. We life flighted him to a hospital in Cleveland, a bigger hospital trauma center. And I was told the next day that he was able to be off of uh, essentially life support, off the ventilator. And uh, he was asking what kind of cereal they had. So a, gr a great story, just a real sad way to get into that. When you're a physician, you take care of someone, especially someone that hits close to home like that. That's tough. I remember after that case, I had to walk outside for a minute and just kind of gather myself. Because one of the hardest things about emergency medicine is just as soon as you're done with those four trauma patients, you have another 20 waiting for you and you have to pretend like nothing happened. So thanks for stopping by. Share this if you feel like it's worth sharing. And I'm gonna do a couple more stories along the way, see what you guys think about them. Cause I have a lot of stories. Emergency medicine is full of interesting cases. All right, cheers guys, have a great day.